Stegosaurus is a genus of herbivorous, four-legged, armored dinosaur from the late Jurassic, characterized by the today's episode we are going to talk about their backs and spikes on their tails. Fossils of this dinosaur have been found in the western United States and in Portugal, where they are found in Kimmeridgian to early Tythonian aged strata, dating to between 155 and 150 million years ago. These were large, heavily built, herbivorous quadrupeds with rounded backs, short fore limbs, long hind limbs, and tails held high in the air. Due to their distinctive combination of broad, upright plates and tail tipped with spikes, Stegosaurus is one of the most recognizable kinds of dinosaurs. Stegosaurus was a relatively large dinosaur, with various lengths among its species. Longest specimen belonged to species Stegosaurus ungulatus, meaning hoofed roof lizard, and it was 9 meters long. This species also had longer hind limbs, smaller and more pointy back plates, and several small, flat, spine-like plates just before the spikes on the tail. Other species was Stegosaurus denops, meaning narrow-faced roof lizard. This is best known of the species, with sizes of about 7 meters long, which makes it the smallest of all Stegosaurus. Lastly there is Stegosaurus alcatus, meaning furrowed roof lizard, with lengths of about 8 meters. The name comes from its unusually large, furrowed spikes with very large bases. There is couple of dubious species of Stegosaurus, which cannot be assigned to Stegosaurus, due to fragmentary fossils. First Stegosaurus fossils were found in 1877 in Morrison in Colorado, during so-called Bone Wars, which were fierce competition between two paleontologists, Edward Drinker Cope, and Othniel Charles Marsh, both sometimes resorting to underhanded methods such as bribery, theft, or even destruction of bones to outdo their rival. Marsh initially believed the remains were from an aquatic turtle-like animal, and the basis for its scientific name, Roof Lizard was due to his early belief that the plates lay flat over the animal's back, overlapping like the shingles on a roof. Year later Edward Cope found another Stegosaurus skeleton, however at first he misassigned it to a different species. Between years 1877 and 1897, plenty of Stegosaurus material was found in the nearby areas. In 2007 spinal column and leg bones were discovered in Portugal, near the city Pof Italia. The most recognizable features of Stegosaurus are its dermal plates, which consisted of between 17 and 22 separate plates and flat spines. These were highly modified osteoderms, similar to those seen in crocodiles and many lizards today. They were not directly attached to the animal's skeleton, instead arising from the skin. The largest plates were found over the hips and could measure over 60 cm wide and 60 cm tall. In a 2010 review of Stegosaurus species, Peter Galton suggested that the arrangement of the plates on the back may have varied between species, and that the pattern of plates as viewed in profile may have been important for species recognition. Galton noted that the plates in Stegosaurus tenops have been found articulated in two staggered rows, rather than paired. Fewer Stegosaurus ungulatus plates have been found, and non-articulated, making the arrangement in this species more difficult to determine. However, the holotype specimen of Stegosaurus ungulatus preserves two flattened spine-like plates from the tail that are nearly identical in shape and size, but are mirror images of each other, suggesting that at least these were arranged in pairs. Many of the plates are manifestly chiral and no two plates of the same size and shape have been found for an individual, however plates have been correlated between individuals. The function of Stegosaurus plates has been much debated. Marsh suggested that they functioned as some form of armor, though Davitashvili disputed this, claiming that they were too fragile and ill-placed for defensive purposes, leaving the animal's sides unprotected. Nevertheless, others have continued to support a defensive function. 
Another possible function of the plates is they may have helped to control the body temperature of the animal, in a similar way to the sales of the Pelicosaurs Dimetrodon, and modern elephant and rabbit ears. The thermoregulation hypothesis has been seriously questioned, since other stegosaurs, such as Kentrosaurus, had more low surface area spikes than plates, implying that cooling was not important enough to require specialized structural formations such as plates. However, it has also been suggested that the plates could have helped the animal increase heat absorption from the sun. Since a cooling trend occurred towards the end of the Jurassic, a large ectothermic reptile might have used the increased surface area afforded by the plates to absorb radiation from the sun. There has been debate about whether the spikes were used simply for display, as posited by Gilmore in 1914, or used as a weapon. Robert Baker noted that it is likely that the stegosaur tail was much more flexible than those of other ornithischian dinosaurs because it lacked ossified tendons, thus lending credence to the idea of the tail as a weapon. He also observed that Stegosaurus could have maneuvered its rear easily by keeping its large hindlimes stationary and pushing off with its very powerfully muscled but short forelimbs, allowing it to swivel deftly to deal with attack. In 2010, Analysis of a digitized model of Kentrosaurus, Ethiopicus showed that the tail could bring the Thagomyza around to the sides of the dinosaur, possibly striking an attacker beside it. More recently, a study of the tail spikes by McQuinney, which show a high incidence of trauma-related damage, lends more weight to the position that the spikes were indeed used in combat. This study showed that 9.8% of Stegosaurus specimens examined had injuries to their tail spikes. There is also evidence for Stegosaurus defending itself, in the form of an Allosaurus tail vertebra with a partially healed puncture wound that fits a Stegosaurus tail spike. 